Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznas here and welcome to another video. Now in this video, I'm going to be discussing ways that you can become rich or wealthy in RuneScape without PVMing. So I get this question a lot in my videos, what should I do for money? If I don't want to PVM or do high level PVM, what are really my options for making money? I'm not into high level PVM yet, I want to get into it eventually, but what can I do in the meantime to try to make a lot of money? Well, this video I'm going to give you all some methods, some advice, and talk about a variety of different things that I think can really help you out. Now even if you really enjoy PVM like me, this video could still be relevant to you because let's be honest, PBM is a huge part of RuneScape 3 and it probably is one of the main, if not the biggest reason that people play RuneScape 3, there's no disputing that. But even for myself, as a huge PBMer, basically one of the main things I do in RuneScape 3 is PBM. I personally need breaks from PBM or just want to go and do something else in the game rather than PBM constantly. Switching up what you do in the game to make money or have fun um, or progressing your account is one of the main ways that you can avoid burnout. So I think this video can really apply to everyone and be pretty helpful, even PVMers. So let's get started. I also thought I'd quickly mention that the Golden Gnomes voting closes on the 16th at midnight, so a little under two days left to vote. So make sure you go vote for all your favorite creators. You can use the link in the description. And thank you again for nominating me for best new RuneScape creator. If you think I'm worthy of the award, Word, you can vote for me there too. But yeah, I just thought I'd mention that so everyone can get their last minute votes in and let's get into the rest of the video. So the first thing I'm going to talk about that's actually probably one of the best options if you aren't a big PVMer to make a ton of money is to get into doing clue scrolls. Now clue scrolls are available in five different tiers, easy, medium, hard, elite, and master clues, and they give various different awards. But the one constant about clue scrolls that make them a very, very good and stable moneymaker is the ability to get treasure trail items that give fortunate components. Now, most treasure trail specific items, things like, you know, dragon masks and different trimmed armor, rune armor trimmed, all that stuff, they can be disassembled to give fortunate components. Now, these components are used to make the alchemical onyx. Now, the alchemical onyx is used in a bunch of high powered jewelry that you see today, such as Luck of the Dwarves, Grace of the Elves, Essence of Finality uses it, and many many more. This makes fortunate components very very valuable. Each component goes for around 1.4 million GP each as you need 50 of these to make an alchemical onyx. Now this is a thing that will make clue scrolls a very stable money maker even if you aren't super lucky. Whether it's easy clues or elite clues you're always going to be getting a very good amount of fortunate components so like I said if you're not lucky or you go dry on the really rare rewards you're still going to be making super good money. So the other great thing like I mentioned about clues is not only will you be making the stable money from doing them from the fortunate components, but you also have the chance at a huge drop to massively increase your bank. Similar to getting things like a really expensive boss drop, you still get that thrill, you still get that rush, and you get that huge payoff, but in some cases it's even more valuable than the high level PVM drops. So here's a list of the most expensive items that you can get from clue scrolls and their prices. So as you can see by this, there are a lot of valuable clue items, most of these being the dyes that are used to dye weapons. So from hard clues, you can get the shadow die and the barrows die, which are actually pretty expensive. I didn't know that shadow dies had gone up that much, but they've like doubled in price since I remember doing clue scrolls. And then you also have like elite clues like blood die, third age die, and ice die which go for an extreme amount of GP at the moment. Like this is my entire bank in one die basically, which is just super crazy to think about. 
Then for Master Clues, you're able to get those dies as well. And of course, you also have the super rare stuff like Third Age, Second Age, and Third Age Druidic, which these all go for varying amounts, some for a lot, some for not that much. They're pretty rare, but they're also an option to get as a really rare drop. And then you have the Orlando Smith's Hat Hero Item Drop that goes for an insane amount of money. So Clue Scrolls, honestly, in my opinion, have it all. If you're looking for something to do other than PvP, VM. It has the consistent money of the regular drops like you would expect from normal drops for PVM, and then they also have those huge amounts of money that you can make off the super rare drops. Here's a quick clip of me over two years ago before I really even started making YouTube videos, something that I recorded, uploaded, and then deleted. Uh, it might be a little cringe, but I thought it would be cool to show you the excitement that I had for getting a rare drop like a die and some other stuff, so enjoy this this, enjoy this old Nuz clip, guys. Top hat. Not sure if I've had that. I think I have, though. But that, that's decent to see. And oh my god! There is no way! There is no way! Are you kidding me? What the fuck? Crap. Well, we're gonna reroll these. Oh my god! What the fuck? So there's always a reason to continue grinding and to continue doing clues because you have a chance at that drop, as well as there's collection logs and titles for each clue log as well, so you can keep track of all the clue rewards you've gotten and kind of aim for a goal on completing a certain amount of them. So it's kind of similar to boss logs in that as well, which is really, really cool. Now, I personally have always enjoyed clue scrolls. While I'm not the biggest clue scroller ever, I do occasionally get in points in play playing RuneScape that I want to really grind out some clue scrolls for a few days, and I have done over 1,000 hard clues. I've done quite a few elite clues and master clues as well. I've actually gotten two shadow dies from clue scrolls. Uh, and a Barrow's die, and I have also received third age pieces as well. So honestly, I've probably made a good four or five billion GP off clue scrolls, which is just crazy to think about compared to PVM. I haven't really grinded clues a ton. I basically get into points where I do maybe clues for a few days, open them up, and then, you know, maybe a month later I do some more. So I'm not constantly grinding them either. So you can really make a ton of money from them. And I feel like clues are honestly great even if you enjoy PVM because it just feels different. There's so many ways you can get clues, whether it's like thieving at Prif, doing Slayer, skilling with the scripture of Bic now, doing your D&Ds like Skeletal Horror or player-owned aquarium. There's so many different ways to get clues. So if you're looking for a way to make a lot of potential money without PVM, or you're just looking to take a break from the constant PVM grind, clue scrolls are an absolute amazing way and one of the most enjoyable ways to do this. Now, although clue scrolls are an amazing way to make money, they are a big grind, just like PBM. So what about something you can do a little bit every day to make some money? Well, daily runs are something that should be a staple for a lot of people, especially if you're not grinding those high-level PBM bosses yet. The GP per hour makes them even more worth it if you're somebody who isn't into, you know, the big bosses and want to make a bit of cash. So daily runs are basically a bunch of things you can do every day to make some good money. This is especially useful for people that don't have the time to play constantly and you can log on whether it be on mobile or wherever you spend your time for 20 minutes and make some money. So I have a full daily run guide that I'll link below if you want a more in-depth look that's pretty up to date with all the best methods. Um, but basically you can also put a farm run into these daily runs as well if you'd like and that'll make you even more money. So so for your daily runs, you'll be doing things like runecrafting with your wicked hood, using your divine locations every day, making the criminal bolts in the wilderness, doing the rune goldberg machine to earn viswax, doing a full shop run, which with how rune prices are right now, that can make you some really, really good money. And there's a bunch of other small daily things that you can do super fast to make some extra cash. Now this isn't going to make you a billionaire overnight, unlike clue scrolls, this doesn't have the potential 
to make you like one bill in one drop or anything, but doing these when you log on every day for like 20 minutes is gonna at the very least make you like a nice 100 million GP each month, and it can make you even more if you mix in things like farm runs and stuff like that. Now daily runs are not for everybody, but I personally find it a good way to keep a nice cash flow going for very little effort. So next we're gonna talk about something that I think is really important for making money on RuneScape 3. One of the most important things, if not the most important, I'm gonna talk about on this list, and that is in one way or another to interact with the new updates. Now, this doesn't always mean that you'll make a ton of money, but in a lot of cases, it has the potential to make you a lot of money. So I'll give a few examples of this. The first is one that you can still take advantage of right now, which is the Golden Party Hat event. You can skill, train, do quests, and get shards to potentially obtain the Golden Party Hat, which right now is still going for around 300 mil, which is a really, really good amount of money. Now, I made over 1 billion GP off this event from grinding it when it first came out, and it's still very, very good money. So when new things come out and you take advantage of them by just playing the game, this can make you so much money. For instance, when Archaeology came out for the first time, I ended up playing a lot, and I really grinded the skill for different materials and earning the chronotes through collections. I actually made over 500 mil selling off the chronotes, selling off materials to people that were rushing to get 120 archaeology during that period. Another example of this is when the Elder God Wars bosses were released like Zuck. Now of course this video isn't about PVM, so we're not going to talk about actually killing the boss, but when Zuck was released in the game came new keys that you could buy and open up chests with to get loot. I think I made around 10 mil in one hour doing these keys for a very relaxed and easy method. Also when the Arch Glacier was released, crystal keys dropped a lot in price, which made me over 20 mil or more every hour just opening crystal chests. A lot of updates have a wide array of impacts and new items that are released, and whether you're a PVMer or not, taking advantage of these things is going to make you a lot of potential money, and in my opinion, it's the most fun I have on RuneScape. Grinding for the Golden Party Hat, making a bunch of money while doing archaeology were actually some of my favorite RuneScape 3 memories, and they have nothing to do with PVM. It gives you a sense of community and interaction, and it's just all around very fun as everyone's interacting with the new content. The current green Santa hat event that's going on right now is another great example of this. By just skilling every day, earning your daily keys from challenges, you can get some Christmas presents with the potential to get a green Santa hat that goes for billions and billions of GP. So make sure you take advantage and interact with all this new content, because it's going to be some of the most fun you'll have in RuneScape, and you could potentially make a ton of money from this without having to go into high level PVM. So if you take anything from this video, take the, you know, sense that interacting with the newer type updates and making sure that you're having fun is going to really make you so much money and make your time so much more enjoyable. Don't do things that you don't like. So for instance, if you really hate doing the boss Raksha, don't force yourself to do the boss Raksha. Maybe you'll make some good money, but you're not going to be having fun. If you really enjoy doing clue scrolls, you should do clue scrolls because it's easier to make 1 billion GP by having fun than being miserable at something you don't really like trying to make the money that way. At the end of the day, RuneScape is a game. It's meant to be something that you have fun with. That's why we play it. That's why we're all here. Um, that's why I make videos. That's why I play the game is to have fun. That's why I started making videos. And that's really what it comes down to. So make sure that you are having fun, going at your own pace. Don't feel the need to have to rush to grind um, to keep up with a certain amount of money. Go at your own pace and you'll end up making money and you'll end up having a lot of fun as well. Now something else I'm going to touch on here is the act of flipping in RuneScape. Now if you don't know what flipping is, it's not for everyone and I'll say that right now, so don't feel like you have to do this at all. Flipping is a way that you buy things off the grand exchange for a lower price and then you sell the items for a higher price over time. It's an activity that isn't very hands on, so for instance you'll put some offers in to buy some stuff and then forget about it and go about your day and then come back later and update those offers. 
offers. Now you don't need a ton of money to start with flipping. You can start flipping with as little as 5 or 10 million GP if you want to, but it is a good way to, throughout the day, just make some passive money and once you get into the big amounts of money, so you're flipping expensive items like whether it be tier 92 weapons, Santa hats, rares, you know, that kind of stuff, you can make way, way more money. Now like I said before, flipping isn't for everyone. It's not something that everyone's going to want to do because it doesn't really involve like skilling or killing monsters or really using like any actual in-game stuff. Um, it's more about, you know, looking at your resources of different items, uh, putting offers in, waiting for them to buy, and then putting them in to sell for a bigger price. Now I have a full flipping guide, so if you want to look more into flipping and getting into it, it's something that I do occasionally now. I don't do it constantly, but since I do have a lot of extra money sitting around, it's kind of nice to make that money work for me and make me a little bit of extra cash. Um, it's not probably going to make you, you know, billions of GP in a day. That's usually not how it works. It's more of something that you can, you know, put in and make some decent cash every day. Um, you know, without putting in too much effort. There's also a Discord called Flipaholics, which is a pretty good Discord that I use, you know, to look at flipping margins. People talk about flipping in there, so I'll also link that in the description in case you want some extra resources as well. But I did make videos on flipping when I first started my channel, and I went from like 5 mil starting cash to like over 100 mil in not too long of time just casually flipping, you know, and then checking the flips every day. Like I said, it's not an active thing. Thing really it's something that you know kind of similar to the daily runs I'd say that can make you some more money now lastly the things that I want to talk about that can make you you know decent money without doing PVM is skilling now skilling is not as good as it used to be there are some methods though that can really make you some good money but there are other methods that don't make you nearly as much as PVM so this is not going to compare to high level PVM but this is a thing that can make you some decent cash so the parts of skilling that's going to make you the most money are the things that are more active. Of course, PVM makes you a ton of money because it's a very active thing, uh, especially the higher level PVM. So it would make sense for skilling, the things that require the most effort, um, that you have to put the most time in, that are the most active and less AFK, are gonna make you the most money. So doing things like rune crafting through the abyss uh, can make you a really good amount of money, like 15 mil per hour with like blood runes, maybe even more, because of the fact that you, you know, blood runes are so expensive expensive right now. Runes are so expensive in general, but you can also get the rune pouch um, threads, which rune pouches go for a decent amount too. So this is an example of like an active method that can make you a ton of money while skilling. The same with, you know, big game hunter. Big game hunter is a hunting method um, that basically is sort of like a mini game. And I actually find big game hunter really, really fun. Um, so that's something that I actually have done quite a bit of. And a big game hunter can make you money not only from the normal drops, but you can also get the really rare pterosaur or mall pieces, which go for a really decent amount of money as well. So this can make you like 10, 15 mil, 20 mil an hour because you can get dragon maddox too, which also go for a good amount. So this is another skilling method that's more on the active side, but can make you some good money. And finally, I'll talk about just the methods that can make you money that aren't necessarily things that are that you're gonna grind for, you know, a thousand hours. I mean, you could, but these are things that mostly uh, are just methods that you can do a few times and then maybe you forget about it and you try a different method. So your classic money-making methods. So things like making unfinished potions, you know, things like tanning dragon hides, you know, doing all those methods that aren't, you know, training a skill, um, they're not, PVMing, uh, they're not doing clues, they're kind of these niche methods that can make you some decent cash and not many people do these methods for hours and hours on end but if you're in a pinch or you want to try something different because like I said the main point of this video is showing you how changing things up and doing things that actually make you have fun uh, is going to make you rich more than anything. So yeah, this was kind of a long video, one of the longest videos I've done in a while, but if you listened to that whole thing, uh, thank you for sticking 
kicking you around. Um, I thought I made some interesting points to give you guys some different things to do, but the main purpose of this video was to focus on telling you that, you know, having fun and doing things that you like, um, and that's not always PVM, and that you can actually make a ton of money without doing PVM. Some of the richest people that I know in RuneScape are either clue scrollers, flippers, people that actually don't do PVM. So if you're somebody that struggles with high level PVM, or you just don't engage enjoy a lot of the higher level PVM bosses, you know, it's okay to not enjoy PVM. You don't have to. There's a lot of different things that you can still do to make a lot of money and enjoy your time on RuneScape. So yeah, a long video, but I really hope you guys enjoy it. I put a lot of thought into this one and uh, yeah, thank you again for all the support and I'll see you all in the next video.